What's up guys, Joey from Bulletproof of BJJ and I wanna share with you a conversation that I had with a guy the other day, uh, came through our Instagram. Um, this is a guy who's dealing with meniscus issues. So meniscus, talking about the knees, uh, he's got some tears and it's not to the point where he has to have surgery. Uh, they're just kind of minor tears that get aggravated sometimes when training. And so he asked me what he could be doing in order to just work with that. So. First thing we've got to acknowledge with meniscus damage is that it's very hard to, to fix it. Um, so tears that you get to the meniscus are often kind of there forever. Um, but depending on the severity of the tear, it's not like a deal breaker. Um, so if we can manage it well, and if we can know what we need to do and what we need to avoid, then we can just live with them forever and it's not really a problem. The first thing to acknowledge if you do have meniscus damage, and this is for me, I've had uh, like two or three meniscus tears over the years. Um, one of them meant that I had to take two to three months off training and I couldn't squat. I remember it was quite a while ago now um, because I had to just let it settle and let the sort of inflammation in the area die down. Once that happened, I was able to go back to training as normal. However, I have always felt on that side, it was my right side, that if I went right into the bottom position of a single leg squat, I would feel it aggravated a little bit. So uh, that's the first thing, just part of my story. Um, so the first thing we've got to acknowledge is if you're training jujitsu and you have damage to the menisci or your, the meniscus on each of your legs, um, it's not really the ideal sport, right? It, it, you know, if it's like, what should I do in terms of staying fit? Probably fucking quit jujitsu. But most of us are here because we love this thing. So that's not really an option. So we want to know how we can continue training jujitsu how we can manage that injury and how we can have a good quality of life. And it can be done. So first thing is obviously it's not to the severity or not to the degree that surgery is required. So just keep that out of the discussion, right? Um, but first thing is let it settle a little bit. So go and see your physio, um, get their diagnosis on how severe the tear is and then take their advice. So if they're like, hey man, look, lay off the jits for a couple of weeks, let it settle, fine. Let's us talk about now what the process is sort of after that sort of initial phase, right? So you've let it settle, um, you're feeling pretty good, it's time to go back to jiu-jitsu. So first thing that I said to the guy was, um, do you feel pain in any of the movements you're using in your strength and mobility training? Um, he said, look, I do feel a little bit of a pinch sometimes at the bottom of a squat. So what worked well for me, and this has been something that I've maintained and will maintain moving forward, um, that I suggested to him was to avoid going into that very bottom depth of the squat. So that means like we're talking, like he's okay from here to here to here to here to here to here. When he goes into this part, he gets a little bit of pain. So really simply, he doesn't have to go that deep in his squat. He just goes to the point where there is no pain and that's his squat range of motion, right? So whether it's pistols, whether it's shrimp squats, whether it's back squats, goblet squats, whatever, he's just mindful of that very end range and he avoids it. Now, um, don't feel like this is the end of the world because your muscles and your joints will strengthen a little bit beyond and a little bit before whichever range of motion you stop at, right? The adaptations will occur about 10 to 15 degrees either side of where you stop. So obviously we wanna take our squats and all of our strength movements to their end range so that we're strengthening as much as possible. But if it's a question between, hey, go to the very end range and aggravate an injury, or go a little bit shorter, but don't aggravate the fucking injury, don't aggravate the fucking injury, right? That's the, that's the first thing. Um, second thing that I was talking to the guy about was what style of jiu-jitsu do you play? And we didn't really get into this, so it was more just me telling him my thoughts, but um, if you play a lot of open guard, or even guard in general, that is really putting your knees into some pretty precarious positions. If we think about how our guards work, um, lasso, X guard, single leg X, spider guard, but even going to more sort of conventional solid guards like half guard and closed guard, there really is a lot of pressure on the knees. So my suggestion is, is if you're taking the long-term view of this thing and you're like, all right, I want to train jiu-jitsu forever, um, it's probably time to start considering using a different kind of guard or not playing that much guard and opting for more of a top game. Because when you do that, your feet are on the ground for the most part, which means you're activating all of the muscles of the leg and you're stabilizing your knee, right? Even when you're in uh, side control or top half guard, you've got feet on the floor so you have base. 
Whereas when you're on your back and you're using your legs like fucking arms and you're threading them in and egg beating and that kind of thing, um, there's a real lack of tension or support at the knee. And this is just, this just opens the knee up to issues, right? So for someone that has sort of recurring knee injuries and is thinking, well, look, I'm not in this game to be a world champion and I do want to be able to train forever and I just love jujitsu, I would say choose your guard specifically and potentially kind of just move away from playing a lot of guard and start to play more top position. Doesn't mean you have to cut it out altogether. You might just think, you know what? Maybe playing off my back 80% of the time isn't the best thing given my knee situation and I'm gonna play off my back 20% of the time. So it's really just shifting our perspective of how we engage with the sport. Um, and I guess if you're hearing this and you're thinking, man, that's huge. Like uh, I'm gonna have to change my whole game because of a knee issue. Well, it's not really that huge when you consider that if your knee gets really bad, then there's no game at all for you to play. So it's better to sort of make a small change or a small sacrifice now so that you can have this lifelong journey through jiu-jitsu and enjoyment uh, without having to walk around with sore knees. I hope that helps. Uh, if you want any help, check us out, bulletproofofbjj.com. Uh, check out our program and stay strong and mobile so you can perform your best on the mats and in life.